So what would you say your your current goals are? What's the next step for you in your career? Um, my my goals would be uh, winning a big offline tournament. That would be that would be amazing for me because um, it's not something I've really done yet. Um, but if I could get a big win offline, that would be that would be super cool. I think because um, I got some some big wins online, but um, never really offline. So um, I would say that in terms of uh, of goals. Hey, I see a story in here. And today I have the honor and the pleasure to share a piece with one of the most exciting players in the game today, Team Liquid's Clem. As we all know, this young guy was able to reach the goal he shared with me of winning an offline event just a few days ago at DreamHack Atlanta. Clemma is one of the nicest and most down-to-earth people I've ever had the opportunity to know, and filming with him was a blast. If you've been enjoying what I do here, be sure to get subscribed, as I have a lot more content with some amazing people in the pipeline. If you really love what I've been doing, consider supporting me on Patreon, as it really helps me out a lot. The link is in the video description. With that out of the way, let's jump in to my word with Clem. So, uh, Clem, thank you so much for taking the time today, man. I really appreciate it. I know it is. So, my customary question, how did you first get started with StarCraft? Um, So, uh, the way I got started was... Um, because my dad was a uh, long-time RTS fan, and he played uh, StarCraft Brood War, then he played uh, WarCraft 3, he was also playing like WarCraft 2 and even some uh, uh, like uh, more ancient RTSs. And um, when StarCraft 2 came out, he um, started watching some videos, some streams of it, and uh, and um, then I was watching it a bit as well, and I was like, oh, that, that game looks pretty cool, I, I want to try sometime. And, and yeah, pretty much one about one year after the release, I uh, I, uh, I started playing myself. Did you uh, play a lot with him? Um, I played a lot with my dad at first, yeah. Uh, yeah, at, at, at first, but um, then I was playing way more than him. So at some point, uh, he, I, I was like catching up very fast. So at some point, he, he couldn't really uh, like practice with me. How long would you say that took in your mind where you got, before you got to the point where he couldn't really uh, play against you anymore? Um, I'd say maybe, maybe like six months. Something like that, I, yeah. w- I would say. That's cool. I think it's a really unique experience, you know? I don't think everybody gets to develop that type of bond over something you both really enjoy. Yeah, yeah, so that's definitely pretty cool um, to have like this, um, this like, thing that you can talk about with uh, like your son uh, or your dad in, in this case and, uh, and have like the, the same passion. I think it's very cool. Do you feel like he understands the finer points of your gameplay? Uh, what does that mean exactly? Uh, like, does he understand the details of what makes you such a high-level player? I think he knows a lot about the game, so he understands a lot of stuff. But there's also some times where he asks asks me um, a bunch of questions, like, "Oh, why did you do that? Like, uh, like how come you do this? Or like, why why don't you do that?" And, and I, um, yeah, he pretty much has like a, like like some questions because yeah, he understands the game very well, but um, there is still some stuff that he um, doesn't like always. Uh, I will exactly understand, and then I can uh, I can ex- explain it to him and uh, and uh, and answer his questions. But I I don't think he understands like uh, yeah like the the yeah like most of it extreme details. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Sure. Yeah, um, like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know you went from playing a bunch with him to obviously building your life around the game. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your family's like uh, your take and opinion on on your choice to dedicate this much time to the game? Yeah, well, my my dad like my dad could understand because he was uh, himself like playing a lot and uh, he he like knew the uh, uh, the Starcraft scene and the environment, so um, he wasn't like nervous when I went to events and stuff like that because uh, he uh, like he knew he knew uh, what he was and um, and what I was doing there. Um, it was a little bit harder on my on my uh, mom's side because she didn't really understand and she doesn't play like any games and she doesn't really uh, understand what it is and um, so it's it, it was a little bit harder to um, convince her that um, I could have like a career in Starcraft and then, like earn some money and um, yeah she she wanted me to study uh, first and then um, but I, I didn't really want to like. Study that that much. Like, and I, I wanted to um, um, play full time StarCraft uh, after my high school degree. 
once you became a multiple time European champion, did her feelings on it change? Yeah, I think it's her feelings on it or um, have changed a lot uh, over the, the years and over the time because um, nowadays she understands a little bit more uh, what it is and uh, I try to explain her a, a lot of times and then I, just, I try to show her like uh, some StarCraft games and try to explain what's happening because she doesn't really understand that much but um, she, she's starting to understand a little bit what, what it is and uh, yeah, understanding it a little bit more but um, it, it can still be a little bit hard sometimes. So, over the last few years, you've had uh, you know kind of a meteoric rise to the top of the StarCraft scene, right? Um, what do you think made you, uh, you know, what, what do you think made it possible for you to see such a uh, skill level improvement over just a few years? Um, I think um, going to Korea was a part of it because when I was there, I feel like I got a lot, like a lot better. Um, uh, like I practiced a lot in Korea and I was in uh, the same um, house as Special so I could watch his games a lot and um, study from his replays and, and, and things like that. Um, and then when I went back to France and I um, played on Europe again, I, I felt way more confident and I felt like uh, I really improved a lot. Um, and also um, going full time after my high school, when I finished high school, going full time and um, um, the fact that I was very focused on the game and uh, no school uh, was very, very helpful. Um, that's probably uh, the main the main thing, I, I would say. Yeah, no, I think that makes a lot of sense, actually, right? For a lot of people, I think going to Korea has um, kind of a profound effect on their, you know, progression with that skill path. Um, and of course, you know, having a lot of face time with uh, such an experienced pro like Special Mm. Um, who's, you know, also been around in the RTS community for like infinity time. Yeah. 15, 16 years or more even. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's really cool to know. I think, you know, it's, it's not always so easy for a, a viewer to understand, you know, why people are, you know, progressing the way that they are or how that happens, you know? Yeah. Sometimes it's even hard to understand for ourselves as well. So. Yeah. So... You know, I think most people would consider you uh, top three in Europe at this point in your career. Um, would you agree with that? Uh, I think that's fair. Um, um, I think uh, I'm definitely top four. Um, top three, maybe. So when you talk about perhaps not being top three, you're referring to Cyril Rayner and Max Pax then, yeah? Uh, yeah, Max Pax is getting very, very good, um, and yeah, even better recently. Um, so he definitely could be a contender for the top three. Um, but I think result-wise, I it would be fair to say I'm top three. Yeah, I think most people would probably agree with that. So how did you first get connected with uh, with Team Liquid? I so I had the contact of TLO. Um, and I was talking a little bit with him about um, Team Liquid and uh, potentially joining Team Liquid. Um, and I couldn't really believe it when he was like, he, like when he like made me sign a contract, I was like, wait, am I actually in Team Liquid? I, I, was, I was very, um, I think it was a, a big jump for me. Um, and I was very, I was super happy to join Team Liquid and when I was thinking of Team Liquid, I would think of like Teja and all of these players I was admiring before. Um, so I was like, it's, it feels pretty crazy to, to now be in Team Liquid as well, um, like those players that I was uh, admiring um, before and when I was younger. So that felt amazing. When did you start following the, the pro scene in StarCraft 2? Um, I started following the pro scene pretty much instantly when I started playing. I was uh, already very interested in, in the pro scene and um, I thought it was really cool seeing, seeing those guys play uh, super well and uh, having like like inside inside a PM and and, and and do like all of these things I can do myself. Uh, so I pretty much followed the pro scene um, the moment I started playing myself. So obviously, it means a lot to you then to represent an organization like Team Liquid. Yeah, it means a lot. It means a lot to me, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty incredible. Is there a particular win from your career that you're like the most proud of? Um, one in particular? 
a win I'm proud of. I would say that I'm pretty proud of um, beating Maru in the uh, Gamers Aid tournament. Uh, that was a uh, um, a few months back. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's one of uh, one of my uh, very nice wins. I think because I I usually struggle a lot against uh, Korean parents and yeah, beating Maru uh, on a stage like that in in a tournament that big. Uh, it 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 was um it was um. Maybe in some way surprising, but um, I was I was proud of myself at that moment. Oh yeah, of course. That's something to be very proud of, right? Maru's <laughs> not somebody who falls down too easily, mm. uh, especially in TBT. He yeah. seems to have that matchup very well mapped out. Yeah, definitely. Um, it might be his best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, what would you say your your current goals are? What's the next step for you in your career? Um. <laughs> My my goals would be uh, winning a big offline tournament. That would be that would be amazing for me because um, it's not something I've really done yet. Um, but if I could get a big win offline, that would be that would be super cool. I think because um, I got some some big wins online, but um, never really offline. So um, I would say that in terms of uh, of goals. Yeah, I think that's kind of a common talking point when people discuss your career is that. You oftentimes seem to be a bit of an unstoppable force in online events, but sometimes struggle at offline events. Yeah. Um, why do you think that is? Is there a particular reason? Do you think it's uh, it's nerves? Or mm, I think it could be um, a few things. Maybe maybe some nerves. Um, sometimes I feel a bit nervous. Sometimes I feel I feel I feel fine on stage, but sometimes I feel, also feel nervous. So um, it could be a bit of that. Uh, also. <laughs> It's honestly quite hard to say, but maybe things like when I travel, I, I like don't sleep as well and, and things like that. And like I, maybe like I, I don't eat as as well and stuff like that, or I don't eat as much. But it's it's always pretty hard to say. But um, I think I also got in some way maybe a little bit unlucky with some of the matches I had o- o- offline. Um, uh, like getting a lot of uh, Korean parents in the one of sixteen of Dreamhack and things like that. So yeah. Um, I think it could have been a bit better for me, but um, I I don't know. It's it's a pretty hard question, honestly, because I, I I don't exactly know myself. Otherwise, I would try to fix it. Um, yeah. Have you ever asked for like advice from some of the you know people like Cyril or Rainer that you're pretty you know obviously you know pretty well who obviously have overcome that sort of thing? Uh, do you think that they might have a useful advice to offer? Um. I've I've never asked or I can I've never really talked about it with Terrell or Cyril or Rainer. Um I I talked about it a little bit with Tielo when I joined Liquid. Um uh it was mostly about like nerves in general, because I was also a little bit ner- nervous online at the time. Um so it was mostly about yeah, the fact of uh, being nervous when we play and, and things like that. And I think he had really good uh, advices for that. Um, so I talked I talked about it with with him a little bit, but hmm. Yeah, Tielo definitely seems like somebody who would be a great mentor. Yeah, yeah, he has a lot of experience and yeah. he knows a lot about that kind of stuff. So, you know, French has a fran- <laughs> France <laughs> has such a rich history of, you know, fantastic StarCraft 2 players and a really well-developed StarCraft scene. Does it feel weird for you to really be the, the face of France as far as, you know, RTS is concerned? Um, nowadays, it doesn't really feel weird anymore because it's, it, it's, it's been quite some time. I think that... Um, I've been the the best like French player, mm-hmm. uh, but it's definitely really cool because France has had some amazing players like uh, over the years. Like uh, they've had a, a ton of players, and uh, at some point maybe they were the the best uh, nation after Korea. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it's really the, the case anymore, but um, France definitely has a really good history of um, soccer two players, and if I can uh, continue that, it's, I think it's very cool. And France also has a lot of. Um, also has a lot of um, supporters and uh, like like fans that love to love to play the game, love to watch the game, and uh, yeah. Um, I feel very grateful for that. Absolutely, I think uh, I think it's really important for the for the community as well. Uh, you know, I think, for example, in, in sporting events, people really love to you know support maybe not individual people, but people that represent their country. You know, yeah. and I think having having a global level competitor really helps keep uh, people engaged 
um, yeah, definitely. from that place. Definitely. In, it gives them someone to uh, cheer for in the to be guest events and, uh, and things like that. So um, I think they're 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 definitely uh, very supportive in that way. Are there any like specific players um, that you you know really looked up to and felt like were significant inspirations for you? Uh, there was a, f- a few players when I started playing. I really liked um, Maru. I was watching him in pro league and and um, and things like that. Um, and then a little bit later, by the time I went to Korea and I was watching a little bit of like yeah like Jesso um, and. Um, I really was inspired by the way Cure played, um, so I was pretty much looking at his VODs, at his uh, like f- first person views in GSL and things like that, and uh, like it really helped to exactly see how how he does things, um, what builds he uses, and uh, he was definitely a, a source of inspiration in that way. And now your teammates? Yeah, we are. It's pretty cool. Super sick. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to see, you know, what, what Cure can do for you guys. But um, are there any specific players that you would consider nemesis? Or, yeah, your nemesis? Uh, nemesis? Um, I think when it comes to nemesis, probably some of the Korean parents, like Bion, was, I, like, has been beating me a lot. Uh, over the years, and um, Mauro as well, um, and uh, yeah, Korean Terrence like that, um, maybe Cure as well, um, pretty much yeah, all the, the Korean Terrence, um, but I think in Europe, um, you could maybe say Cyril, because he was also beating me a lot, but he's also beating everyone <laughs> yeah. a lot, so, uh, and I'm not like, sorry doing worse against him than, than like other people, so. I don't know if we can really count count him as a nemesis. Sure. Maybe. Yeah, Cyril's everyone's nemesis. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> fair enough. So yeah, you went to you know Riyadh for Gamers Aid, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, what was your experience like in, in Saudi Arabia? We were we were very uh, well um, treated. That's for sure. They uh, they um, welcomed us very nicely. That's fantastic. I'm I'm glad. I, that's pretty much. Uh, you know, what I've heard from folks across the board. Yeah. So, moving away from uh, just StarCraft 2, do you have any specific, like, expectations or hopes for Stormgate? Um, I have a lot of hopes for Stormgate. I think they can make a really good game. Um, now, uh, I think it's it's going to be quite hard to do a... or, like, to make a game that's going to be better than StarCraft, because StarCraft is, it feels like it's already a... such a good game. Uh, I want... I believe they can make a a game even better than StarCraft, but I think it's going to be very hard. Um, and I'm hyped for Stormgate. I'm going to try it. I'm going to play it when it comes out, and uh, I'll see if I like it. Um, but I'm not a hundred percent confident uh, they can make a, a game better than StarCraft. But I I would love to uh, be proved wrong in some way. And I, yeah, if the game is if the game is, is good, I'll definitely play it. And I'm, I'm pretty excited for it, of course, as a a lot of. Uh, or as talk about players and fans. Yeah, I don't think it's easy to make an RTS that's better than maybe the greatest RTS of all time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I uh, I agree. I hope I hope they can do it, but it's definitely a tall order. Mm-hmm. So, are there any specific features or design elements that you really want to see in like a next generation RTS? Uh, that's that's a good question. Um... So like features that don't really exist in StarCraft that I would like to see in other RTSs. Or just design changes, any, anything you feel like, you know. I feel like, yeah, I feel like in StarCraft, uh, cloaked units are probably not the best. And I think Stormgate also uh, um, talked about that before where um, um, I think cloaked units were, um, I think a, a big cause of the, the frustration when people play StarCraft and uh, I think they, they might not be a uh, very necessary to have. So it wouldn't be, too bad if uh, those mechanics were removed. I think mm. um, when it comes to things they could add, um, I think they could maybe sim- simplify the way uh, the units hotkey sometimes. But it's 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 a it's, it's a bit hard to tell exactly 
exactly what I would what I would want to improve because um, I, I think Star Cup is already pretty uh, when I play it, it feels very uh, natural because I've, I've played it for like 10 years so um, I don't really have like any complaints uh, on stuff that like doesn't feel good or anything because I, I feel pretty comfortable on it um, but they could definitely do some more things maybe to uh, make it a little bit more accessible to new players um, while um, keeping that like very high skill ceiling that we know that would be pretty cool yeah, I think the cloaked unit point is a good one because there is something very negative about playing well, but then just losing anyway because you forgot one little thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that does seem very frustrating. It's not something I ever really thought about because it's such an integral part of Starcraft mm -hmm. and it's just always been there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's an interesting change. Uh, I, I also think, yeah, of course, it's not an easy question mm -hmm. to answer in general they're spending millions of dollars and thousands of hours yeah. to try to answer these questions so i think you did a you know a great job uh trying to answer that but that, that's about what i had prepared for you so do you have any closing words um any closing words um just in general um well uh i would want to thank uh, team liquid as always they've been supporting me for uh i think about three years now uh and I want to thank them because they've been like super supportive of me always, and uh, and um, they always believe in me. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for uh, taking the time to uh, to listen to me talk and uh, and watch this interview. So that's really cool. And uh, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, well, that about does it. All right. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this piece, be sure to give it a like, drop a comment down below, and consider sharing it with some friends. If you don't want to miss out on future releases like this, be sure to get subscribed. If you want to help me in my efforts to keep producing this type of content, support me on Patreon. The link is in the video description. That's all for now, my friends. Until next time.